welcome to God's Word for us that come. Ghana's online Christian station. Be blessed as you listen to messages on the site. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, thank you for your mercy and thank you for your grace. Thank you for the life of Reverend Istud Anaba. Thank you for his life. Thank you for the life of Bishop Patrick. Thank you for the life of Reverend Dr. Joy. Father, tonight, that which you have started, please continue it so that your people will glorify you. Thank you for answered prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray with thanksgiving. And let somebody say, Amen. Hallelujah. You can please have your seats. Amen. All right. It's amazing. <laughs> Amen. I also want to thank God for your choir. And um, the, the, the group that sang extremely devoted. I want to thank God for their lives also. And I thank God for the lives of the instrumentalists. And above all, I thank God for the life of my own brother. Huh? You are too much. I enjoyed your song. Uh, can we give a clap of note to Jesus for the servant of God? Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, as usual, F sharp. Piano and strings. Grand piano and strings. F sharp. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Um, tonight, God sent me with a prophetic word. And the an anointings have been already released into your spirits, into your souls, and even into your bodies, and even into objects that you brought. Uh, but the Lord said, I should come and declare that it shall come to pass that you will get there. I said, you will get there. I hear the Spirit of God is saying, you will get there. I'm talking to somebody here tonight. The Lord said, I should come and tell you, you will get there. You will get there. You will get there. You will get there. I hear it being echoed up in the corridors of eternity and in heaven. That say the spirit of the most high God. It shall come to pass. You will get there. Your feet will step there. You will get there. You will get there. Hallelujah. You will get there. Turn your Bibles with me to John chapter 14. Napo Amen. Amen. Shira. Honey, <laughs> 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 
also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Give me verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you and receive you unto myself. But where I am, there ye may be also. That where I am, ye may be also. Where I am, ye may be also. This is a wonderful text, a wonderful scripture, but preachers have only dealt with the scripture only from one perspective. But the Bible says that the word of God is a two edged soul. And for every scripture you see in the Bible, there is a theological perspective of the scripture. There is a textual perspective to the scripture. There is a revelatory perspective to the scripture. And there is also a prophetic perspective to every scripture you read. In the book of Isaiah, Sixty-one, verse 1 the spirit of the Lord God is upon me for he has anointed me it was actually a textual scripture it lay in the scriptures for years scripture is fulfilled. The years before it was only a theological concept. It was only a textual something. But Jesus comes and brings yet another perspective to it. He says before your very eyes. This scripture that you see lying in this book. The book can no longer contain it. It is standing here. Now, this particular scripture, many preachers, especially Pentecostal preachers, have preached the scripture, done justice to it. They've spoken about the coming of the Lord Jesus. Anytime anybody wants to preach about heaven, wants to preach about us going to heaven and Jesus coming and all that, we use the scripture. It is theologically correct. But that is not the only import of the scripture. 
There are principles in this scripture that can be applied to eternity. Yet, there are principles also that can be applied to now, next week, next two weeks, next three weeks, next month, next year. The disciples had been with Jesus for a long time. The word had become flesh and had dwelt among them. He was with them. At the point he taught them how to pray because he, they saw how he was with the teacher. He taught them how to pray. He was with them. Then at the point he told them, I have to go. I need to go. Which means that there is coming a time as you have been walking close to me, I've been by you like this. You can see me. There is coming a time you will not see me close to you again. And when the disciples heard that, their hearts were troubled. Because they had been so used to the Savior. A Savior whose miracle working power could even be brought down even to simple things like multiplying bread for them. And they were so used to him. A Savior who could take them to a wedding and to make them enjoy the wedding would turn water into wine. I mean, this was a Savior they, they, they were used to. But he was living and their hearts were troubled. And he said, I'm going. I'm going to prepare a place for you. It's a place where you have not gotten there yet. But one day, you are going to get there. But don't let your heart be troubled. The reason being that I am going there. You, 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 can, you cannot get there yourself. I'm going, I'm going there before you. I will reach there before you. When I reach there, I will prepare a place. I will prepare a place. Heaven is actually a planet. Heaven is so far away from earth. If Jesus can move from earth to heaven this long distance to go and prepare a place because he is expecting that you will get there he says that you will get there he wants you to get there he wishes he, he, he loves that you will get there and because he wants you to enjoy he's gone that far to prepare that place how much less next week next month next year next three years next four years can i talk to somebody here the reason why i'm telling you tonight and god said i should tell you tonight that you will get there is i see somebody i see the lord is already gone before you i see jesus in your next week i see jesus in your next two weeks i see jesus in your next four weeks he is preparing a place for you and he says and i will come and receive you unto myself and where I am, there ye may be also. Listen to me. You will get there. I say you will get there. I say you will get there. I said you will get there. I say you will get there. I say you will get there. Likewise, 
The spirit also help our infirmities. For we know not what to pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself maketh intercession on our behalf. And he that set it, the mind. No. Listen to me. Oh my God. It is us who talk of destiny. Human beings talk about destiny. Your destiny. Your destiny. All of us here are going somewhere. I said all of us here, we are going somewhere. Academically. Maritally. Financially, socially, spiritually. We have, we have not reached yet. We are going somewhere. But you see, human beings talk about destiny. But Jehovah talks about predestination. And we know that all things work together for good. For them that love God and are called according to His purpose. Them that He predestinated, He also called that they will be conformed to the image of His dear Son. So that he may be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, them that he predestinated, he called. And them that he called, he justified. And them that he justified, he glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God, if God, if God, if God, if God be for us, who can be? against us. Listen to me. Oh Jesus, help me tonight. Are you with me? Follow me please. Are you with me? So God talks about predestination. It means before you got here, you had reached where you were supposed to reach even before. Oh, you are not hearing what I'm saying. Oh, you had reached. You are there already. In the realm of the spirit, you are there. I said, in the realm of the spirit, you are there. And these two nights, God sent Reverend Eastwood to impart something into your spirit. Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah, you are about to move. I said, I see you are about to move. I said, you are about to move into the place. You will get there. You will get there. Predestination. You will get there. There are many reasons why people don't get to where they are going. There are many reasons. But tonight I want to talk about two. And this two, all of us sitting here tonight, including me, it is happening live and practically in our lives. Two reasons why we are not getting to where we are going. Many people are not getting to where they are going, number one, because there are things that are stopping them. Things. 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 I said things. Stopping them, number one. Number two, many people are not getting there because they don't have what it takes. They don't have what it takes. What it takes. Oh yeah. You know, recently... I was trying to go to Accra, but it was when the invest, um, KNUSD guys had vacated, so I went to the VIP station. When I got, I didn't get the bus. I didn't get the bus. That was when they said uh, it, it used to be um, 20 Ghana CDs for VIP. So someone said, eh, now aeroplanes move from Kumasi to Accra. So I was thinking to myself, I said, I really want to go with an airplane. But only I said, I've done my calculations. So I asked the guy, I said, 
Uh, let me find out. The airplane, did they also charge 20 Ghana cities? The guy said, of course not. He said, the lowest you can get, even though you should do the book in a long time. And that was when Antrak, that was when Antrak and CityLink, Antrak was showboy. He said, the least you can get is 120 Ghana. When I look at my car, my, my man, you know, I really wanted to go to Accra. I really wanted to go to Accra. But my 250, my, my 20 Ghana and my other things I used to buy, something at Linda Door and all those things. I, I couldn't go to Accra with it. But I wanted to. I said, I wanted. I said, I wanted to go to Accra. I declare to somebody here. Tonight, the Spirit of God is doing two things here. The things that have been stopping you. The things that stopped your mother. The things that stopped your father. The things that stopped the presidents. The things that stopped nations. The things that stopped even people with high anointings. The things that stopped them. Today I see Jehovah himself. I said I see Jehovah himself. It's about to clear. I said it's about to clear. Those things from before you. And whatever you need. But you don't have. But that thing is what it takes to get there. Tonight I see Jehovah himself. is going to give it to you. I said he's going to give it to you. I don't know if somebody is ready to receive it. Say I receive You will get there. I'm finishing. Just short. I'm finishing shortly. Then we'll go home. Isaiah chapter 45. Verse 1 to 4. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed. To Cyrus, whose right hand I have holding to subdue nations before him, and I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaf gates, and the gates shall not be shut. Give me verse 2. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. God is speaking to somebody tonight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in thunder the bars of iron. Oh, give me verse 3. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I the Lord which called thee by thy name am the God of Israel give me the verse 4 for Jacob my servant sake and Israel my elect I have even called thee by thy name I have said name thee though thou hast not known me. Though thou hast not known me. The anointing of God is a very precious thing. The anointing of God is God himself. It's a dimension of God. But he puts in on a man. It's precious. A holy God. The anointing is a holy thing. Oh Jesus. Cyrus, according to this last scripture, doesn't know God. I said he doesn't know God. 
He doesn't know God. He doesn't know God. He has never prayed in tongues before. Never paid tithe before. Never gone to Sunday school before. I'm not saying all those things are good to do, no. He's never done anything before. One day, I called the bosom of the Nenima Correction form, called the Tiako Pimp Informers from the bosom. As he was getting out of the house of his little God, the anointing of God seizes him. I said, The anointing of God comes upon him. Tonight, can I talk to somebody here? Everybody under the sound of my voice. These two nights, I said, These two nights before this night. And previous nights and previous days, I came to tell you, you have received an anointing. And that anointing abides. And you are not hearing what I'm talking about. I didn't come to town to tell you that you are not anointed. If Cyrus, who didn't know God, has received an anointing, then I can say, if I've had my quiet time before, then I am anointed. Christ in me. Christ in me. I said Christ in me. Christ is the anointed one. And it's anointed one. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. You know, people talk about the anointing of God. But the anointing of God is very powerful. But one thing that is always on the heart of God is His purpose. I said His purpose. God's purpose. The reason why God will release a dimension of Himself to a human being who does not come near even though the human being is created in his own image and likeness but he doesn't come near to the spirituality to the stature to doesn't come near God at all but yet God is able to allow himself to come into a human being is because of his purpose there is something God wants to do on this earth for his glory. And he wants to use man. And because the purpose is divine, the strength of humanity cannot accomplish it. So then, he has to release his anointing. And sometimes, or all the times, it is the purpose of God then which makes God make His grace and His mercy available. He looks at the purpose and says, this thing must be done. But I must get somebody to do it. But without me, you can do nothing. So I have to release my anointing. But this person doesn't deserve it. You are taking my volume. Can I have some more volume? This person does not deserve my anointing. But I will be gracious. I'll be merciful. I said, I'll be gracious. I said, Cyrus, he was an idol worshiper. The scripture says, he didn't, even God said, even though you have not known me, I've anointed you. I came to talk to somebody here. I know you know you are anointed, but I'm saying it again so that it shall be reinforced in your spirit. I say you are anointed, and that is why you are going to get there. I said that is why you are going to get there. Now we talk about the anointing, but what happens when the anointing has come? There are reasons why you will get there. One, he will hold your right hand. I said, he will hold your right hand. Tonight, some of you, you begin to feel as I'm preaching, 
you will begin to feel some heat in your right hand tonight what has been happening in the corners of heaven is about to be transposed into this earth realm in the name of Jesus tonight may the right hand of God find your right hand may the right hand of God find your right hand somebody may the right hand of Jehovah may you find your right hand in the name of Jesus right hand uh, in thy presence there is fullness of joy listen to me the presence of God of God is one of the dimensions of the benefit that we get from God in your presence there is fullness of joy but there are yet higher dimensions the Bible says in thy presence there is fullness of joy but at thy right hand there are pleasures evermore. Let's render a theological analysis here. In thy presence, there is fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. But Lord, when I move to your right hand, it is not joy again. It goes to pleasures. I said it goes to pleasures. It is no longer full. I've seen something that is full that becomes empty. I've filled my I've filled my tank so many times with diesel. I filled it with diesel. By the time I move from here, from Bibiani to Accra, it's left with small. I do some small town riding. Everything is finished. Fullness is powerful. In thy presence, there is fullness of joy. But at thy right hand, there are pleasures. Oh, can I talk to somebody here? Joy is what you feel. I want to just give a smile. Joy is what you feel when you are in a relationship. You have a beloved. I'm talking about a holy relationship. You go out. You look at each other. You look at your faces. You touch hands. Then some electricity is flowing through your body. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. Oh, joy. I, I, I'm just trying to give you. I, I, I'm, I'm not saying that that is joy, but I'm, I'm trying to give you. I don't know. Sir, something to make you understand joy. I want to compare joy and pleasure. I get in the end. I want to say something for you to get joy. I, I don't know. But then you, it's like, ah. Oh. Then the person calls you. You have a call. Then they say, it's your beloved. Uh, you see the way. You, you, joy. But pleasure, I say pleasure, is higher than joy. It is that one that happens after the wedding. The wedding night. Ah, you are not hearing what I'm saying. Ah, <laughs> those of you who are married, shout yes. And those who are not married, shout yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are getting there. I say you are getting there. Am I talking to somebody here? At thy right hand, can I talk to somebody here? I see Jehovah. It's, are you hearing me? And the pleasures, they are ever more. Are you not hearing what I'm saying? One hour time, it used to be two. In an hour time, it becomes four. In two hours, it becomes eight. In three hours, it becomes sixteen. In five hours, are you hearing what I'm saying? Can I talk to somebody here? I come to declare to somebody you are about to feel something. Your life is about to change. The days of your peace going down are off. Every day your peace will multiply. Are you hearing me? I see the right hand. I am too capable. Verse 1, I'm finishing. I'm closing. The verse 1. I'm closing. You will get there. I come to declare to somebody here. Tonight I see Jehovah hold you like this. I said Jehovah is holding you like this. I see Jehovah is holding you like this. 
I don't know where you can't go. I said, I don't know where you can't go. Am I talking to somebody here? I said, tonight, oh, you are not hearing what I'm saying. I said, you don't know what I'm saying. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Katosi Mahandaba. Sawuto Wawuradi Wakumemu Nawatini Yinemu Nasawu Wuto Wunyoko Wuto Wunya Sawa Sasafia Mahanda Katosha People to do Koku Koku Pumba Ah It's low Ah It's low Oka 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 Ah, yes, I shall so. Ah, what my kingdom? Ah, what the pressure? Ah, Sasafia, Sasafia, the Danny Bosu. Ah, people, do do. Oh, Jesus, go to the moon, pa. Ah, it's low. Ah, Oka. lunch at the golden tulip recently when i entered the place normally i just my jeans and simple but the man was there immediately he saw me he lifted up his head he said gentlemen where do i know you i know he doesn't know me anywhere physically but his spirit has seen but there was something on me. So I said, Lighthouse. And because he didn't want to embarrass me, he said, Okay, fine, 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 fine. Wow, is everything okay? Is your bishop okay? I said, Powerful. When I finished, I was going, he said, Young man, God bless you. God be with you. The point I'm trying to make to you is that the anointing on you, people notice it. 
people who have eyes they see it and there are two types of eyes we have good eyes and we have the evil eye yeah oh yes there are many tongues we have tongues of the learned we also have tongues of asps and tongues of the wicked so many people are seeing you nowadays they have seen they know that when an anointing comes then it means Jehovah's purpose is about to be fulfilled in a church in a family in a nation can I talk to somebody here those of you who are expecting war in Ghana let me tell you something I declare the purpose of Jehovah God is raising anointed men if you don't want to tell you as a prophet Ghana has been chosen in this end time God is raising people from this land and we are going to go to all the nations are you hearing what I'm saying we are not going only with anointing but we will go to America with anointing and with money to preach the gospel the days of looking for money from America before we can go and preach I tell you as a prophet in this nation it shall be over are you hearing what I'm saying like in the 1950s when South Africa had some of the money from Ghana are you not hearing what I'm saying when Zimbabwe known as Rhodesia had some of the money from Ghana I come to tell you the cycle has come back again are you hearing what I'm saying are you not hearing what I'm saying that Jehovah who raised Kwam and Kroma in Ghana is about to raise spiritual people who are more than Kwam and Kroma are you not hearing what I'm talking about God's purpose will be fulfilled am I talking to somebody here our nation will not be destroyed we are going to be a middle income nation are you hearing me you don't need to go for holidays in South Africa when you go you won't meet anybody the South Africans are coming here to work the Americans are coming here to work am I talking to somebody here God has a purpose I feel it tonight. Tonight can I prophesy? Can I prophesy like I feel it? Nidhi anti kabahadushi. Sini miha. So, immediately the anointing came on Cyrus. Not a nation. The nations. The nations. They saw it. The reason why you have not reached there, and some of you want to give up. Oh, oh my God. The things that are fighting you in the spirit, if only God were to open your eyes to see. Bishop, if only God were to open your eyes to see as you came to Kumasi, you and mommy, even in Temali, the things that you had to fight to win but it, I thank God sometimes he doesn't even allow us to see them he deals with them for us so that they cannot stop us I thank God I thank God I thank God please all of you come to me come to the front I'm talking about nations Make a one logo logo line. 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 Now this not a nation. Nations. This is you. You want to marry. You want to be a missionary. That is your way. You want to read your masters. You want to become a shepherd. You want your church to be one thousand. You want your church to be a hundred percent tight paying church you want your mother to be born again you i'm, I'm talking to somebody here the, the, your, your heart's desire is actually your there where you want to reach your dream now you've been doing your best oh 
somebody you just want to finish school you want to pass that exam and all this why you don't understand why you've been trying it oh i don't know if i'm talking so some of you it's a baby it's a baby it's a child i don't know if i'm and the nations have seen the anointing and the anointing suggests that jehovah's purpose is about to be fulfilled so the nations they start fighting you oh jesus brother come come yeah you come nah. this is his there this is his there this is the there for the brother but he has to start from here are you hearing what i'm saying can't be so antipala and he's moving on go he wants to go but the first nation continue fight 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 all night i said all night fasting and prayer 21 days fasting and prayer still he has no move bring him back take him back oh no 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 i mean you 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 take him back push him back are you hearing me he even started here are you getting what i'm saying but now he's somewhere here oh you're not hearing what i'm talking about and people are speaking his superiors are saying you are a lazy guy all your people are doing well the other pastors their churches are growing up the other pastors their incomes are going high the other guys they are reading their masters can't you see all your your mates they are driving their cars but there is a dream in your heart to drive a car there is a dream in your heart to make your church have money there is no pastor who doesn't want his church to be one million who says we don't want church growth who says our spirit our days church growth and this is the pastor he used to have 100 members trying everything that he can now the members are left with 20 am i talking to somebody here somebody he said i want i want to advance my business and he's trying hard now the capital with which he started is finished and now he even owes people and it looks like he's going to go to prison but god sent me here to tell you you are not going somewhere you will get there am i talking to somebody here ah are you hearing me ah i'm talking about a nation i'm not talking about a personality a nation has got organized army organized defense systems organized equipment some nations even have got chemical weapons like syria am i talking to somebody here am i talking to somebody here nations are rich if they plan to stop you they have what it takes to stop you am i talking to somebody here and it's not only one nation some of you it is not a nation that is fighting you there are nations i said there are nations can i talk to somebody here but that is the reason why that even your quiet time is not good enough your back pain is not good enough even though your love for god is not good enough am i talking to someone here even though your prayer life is not good enough but tonight because of the purpose of God it's not about your quiet time it's not about your holiness it's not about your principal nature it is not about that it is about the purpose of God am I talking to somebody here are you hearing me that is why he has even anointed you but he has not finished he does not finish with anointing the anointing is a starter it's an appetizer it's a motivator for jehovah himself to remind him of his purpose are you hearing me so jehovah has anointed him the nations as he's fighting he's so tired 
he's so tired even if he overcomes this one this one has been resting waiting for him can you imagine so he finishes one and he wants to rest then all of a sudden another one comes up Reverend Amor haven't you seen it immediately you solve one problem with all your strength then another uglier one rises up I'm talking about the nations and one thing you must know the nations they don't stand alone they are running oh you are not hearing me they are very coordinated are you hearing me they are running are you here they talk to each other they compare notes they exchange weapons am I talking to you they exchange technology sometimes one army of a nation goes to the other nation and their army trains the other nation in the latest technology in warfare oh my god my god my god but God said I should tell you there are many nations waiting to kill you waiting to destroy you waiting to make you nonsense waiting to make you a lonely person waiting to make sure that you don't marry some of them they say your business will not do well some of them say your husband will never be good but I declare when God anoints you ah, he will do something Jehovah comes and he subdues are you hearing what I'm saying this is Jehovah I said this is Jehovah and today I see him in Bantama I said I see him Then he still holds your light down, light down, light down. He still holds his right hand. Come. Ah, hey, anything that was above you and was stopping you is coming under your feet. God, the abuse. Satan, shortly under your feet. by a miracle the nations because it was was going to take all your life you couldn't even overcome one nation Cyrus be 
begin to rejoice in your heart. Yeah. At the point when God anointed him and he began to see the nations who were against him, he even regretted, Why did you call me? Yeah. Recently, in Bibiani, I said, God, why did you call me? Number one. Number two, why did you call me to this place? Why did you call me to this place? You pour out all that you have. Pour out all your heart. You pour out all your heart. Yet the result you see, Bishop. So I was talking to my bishop. And I told him, I said, allow me to speak my heart. Because I look prophet, whatever. But I am not the anointing. The anointing comes upon me, but I'm human. Yeah. My heart breaks. My heart bleeds. Seven years in the beginning. I didn't preach, I mean preach here. I didn't love, I mean show here. And the same people you pour out your heart, they accuse you. They accuse you. You should hear church members that you have loved them. Please pray for them and lay hands on them. Church members. One guy came to his, the church with his wife. The, church, the woman had sister for diseases. Hypertensive, B, C, all of it. Breast cancer, what everything. I laid hand on the woman, spoke some tongues I've never spoken before. Then I said, Go and have checkup. When you went, all the diseases had vanished. All the diseases. Yes. When the mice were fighting us, got our land, the mice came, we had built. Can you imagine we had built? Put whatever their mind they say stop work is their land. How do I explain to Accra? And the woman's husband, the woman's husband was a big man in the mind. Reverend, can you imagine? Instead of I thought I said say some for us. Can you imagine? He joined, he teamed up with the management. Because he was also a manager. And they said they would take everything from us. It was a Muslim, a, a media guy. I'm telling you. He called me, said, Pastor, I've seen your passion. He said, I saw you when you were in the community center. I said, I, I, I see your passion, the way you have guided the youth in this town. He said, I hear you are a marine engineer. And he said, I asked myself, what is a marine engineer doing in a place like BBM? He said, your so-called Christians, they are fighting. But he said, so once there is blood in me, I could tell that anointing has come out. He said, once there is blood in me, I will fight for you. You will get your land. Our land that we have in BBN, it was, it was a, a Christian in my church whose wife had laid hands. He was, he was among, and they were taking it out of our hands. When he said, oh, hey, it will be alright. When I said, I'm kind of, oh, oh, man of God, don't come there. I'm there. We are doing everything. Everything's going to be alright. Son of God. I'm telling you. He used to tell people, say, we like us, we feel that we are whatever. They will show us, we know that we are nothing. Yeah. So if you see the Bibini church today standing, it was an Amedea man that God used. Amadea. I was telling my bishop, I said, my heart. It's not easy. Things fight us. I told my bishop, I said, it's all you are not. I said, but I am not the anointing. As Reverend Sweet ministered yesterday, when he sits in the car like this, he goes to his room, and then he lays on his bed. You see it lift like this, it lifts. I'm telling you. Our hearts bleed. But I came to talk to somebody here. You will get there. And tonight I'm preaching to myself. I'm telling you, this last three months, this three months, I'm so discouraged. You are, if you want to see a discouraged man, you are, you are looking at one. You don't have any idea. But as God spoke, I'm encouraged. Beloved, we will get there.
I'm telling you. So he subdues the nations. And can I talk to somebody here? You are going to literally walk. I say you are going to literally walk on the things you used to fear. Anyone who brought your water, it's time to hold your water in your right hand. Keep your water in your right hand whilst I'm preaching. Talibo Sihanda. Thank you, Jesus. Wakra no betie mi sufre. Wakra no betie. Mama ni hui. Wakra no be mami ni amepe. Hecha uni me ni da shua abra boi. Nana nyami ukwani me ni da shu abra boi. Listen, Wakra no be tie mi sufre. Wakra Wakra Wakra. Hey. Wakra no pe mami ni amepe mi nyamie Ja uku ani meni ta sua bravo Oh jeme tata jeme kai kodisi e chocho na mi ni opuafu ya beka Oh azumi ah Yesu ah mi ni opiara Somebody back me. Hey, na me we we repepa na na ya me bua ah eu ni me ni da tu ah dem do aqui. Come on, play. Wa kura no beti ye mi sukire ah ihi ah. already tonight. Oh, do you feel you will get there? I will lose the loins of kings. Do you know once you were fighting the nations, the kings, they didn't come. They were waiting. Kings are so powerful. They have great organizational ability. And they are supported by financial power. They can regroup and degroup. So whilst you were dealing with the nations, the kings were waiting for you. They were waiting for you. And one thing you must know about kings, these are entities and they are very intimidating to the normal human soul. They will intimidate you. And sometimes because of the intimidating nature of kings, we humans think that even kings don't have a weak point. But sometimes the strength of kings is actually their weakness. said the strength of kings is actually their weakness. 
He said, God will lose the loins of kings. Can I have about seven guys again? Nasu Tapahai. Say, come again. Oh, can you clap for Cyrus? This one, they're not one logo logo lie like this. Oh, this is there. <laughs> oh, some, there's somebody here. Your there is a car dealership. I see, I stand there. You're going to have a car dealership, a big one. You're going to sell both brand new cars and second hand cars. That is your there. I said, that is your there. And the anointing you received is taking you there. But the kings have seen it. The kings, and, this is the, and they've, they've crossed the line like this. And sometimes if you don't take time, you would speak to yourself, I won't become anything. What you can even become, you will think you can. In fact, what you even are, you will think you are not. So because of the things you've come across, you, you even think you are not anointed. It has never happened in my church before. One lady was going to give birth. I was in tech. That was last week or so. Having a process. Last, yeah, last two weeks. Having a program in tech. I was praying. In the morning, I was praying for the all of the, the Spirit of God takes me to the house of the lady. Yeah. So I began praying for her. Then I came into the flesh again. Then I took my phone and I called her. And I said, How are you? He said, I'm having abdominal abdominal pains. I said, It's labor. Because I saw him. I said, It's labor. So I called one of the midwives in church. The lady quickly went. She called me in 30 minutes time. She's in the hospital. So, I had, have a lot of midwives in church. So I said, okay, I've handed it over to them. That was my mistake. To cut a long story short, can you imagine that baby was preached? It was a preach. And they didn't take, they didn't take, and then they, delete, they, they made the lady deliver. They were losing both of them at the point the nurse had to leave the baby like this because the baby came came with the bum before the baby and before, then the hands was inside like this so they had to just leave the baby somewhere had to, the woman was dying i hear that when you either you die even when you survive you paralyze one of my guys is an unsatisfied lemon he doesn't know. As you have, they didn't call anyone. When they were going, call some of the guys. I guess they were like, they didn't call anyone. You see this thing that you are in church, you don't want to relate. You don't want to every time. Oh my God. In fact, the doctor, when all my guys, all the, about 12 of them, they stood, made wise, and then they said, your baby should not die with all these people you have. Oh Jesus. He called me. Finally, took the baby. You're just going to the hospital. He went to the hospital and said, You should go to it. When, he, when the baby was lying there, they had just grabbed it. It was dead. He said, It's dead. It's dead. Then he took the baby, took the baby to the theater. From 8 to 4, he made the baby have heartbeat again. But because the baby didn't have oxygen or something, so the, the brain was. So even the doctor said, Look, even if this baby survives, it's a problem. From 8 to 4 on the baby. We lost that baby. A handsome boy. When they called me, rushed back. Oh Jesus. I've never seen so it. Ah, people who are pregnant three months, four months, they have miscarriage. They bleed. They bleed. They go. The doctor even says the thing is for this. I, I call the, the boss, the doctor. I say, if you touch it, I will sue you. And we believe God. And the baby after that bleeds. The woman bleeds for four more months. And the pregnancy is also increased. And the doctor says, We are obey bele bele. But they give birth and they are normal. How can
can a live one die like that? Then I started hearing voices. Are you a prophet? Are you a man of God? I'm telling you, say that sometimes when these kings locate, when these entities find you, what you are, you will think you are not. And some of you, you are sitting here. I came to tell you, you are a millionaire. The poverty, the poverty doesn't mean anything. Don't allow the devil to use your poverty poor situation now to speak to you. You are a success. Don't let the circumstance of failure. Don't you are not hearing what I'm saying. Let everyone be a liar and let God be true. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Can I talk to somebody here? In the name of Jesus, you are not the fornicator. Am I talking to somebody here? The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that same spirit dwelleth in your mortal body, and that same spirit shall quicken you. The righteous man shall fall seven times. Oh, my enemy, do not love. Are you not hear what I'm saying? Can I talk to somebody here? These entities. You are not useless. I came to talk to somebody here. It's true, you have not been able to be you, this year. Your prayer life has been some way, but it's not over. I said, It's not over. Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession on our behalf. So these kings, I'm closing. I'm just doing two, then I'll close. Kande Sopahayanda. Shinatushi. Brother, try and go there. All of you stop him. That's what the kings do. Yeah. All of you stop him. Stop him. Yeah. The kings. I said the kings. I said the kings. But they are so intimidating that you will never think, because they are so strong that you think they don't have a weakness. But their strength is actually their weakness. Because they think they are strong. They don't depend on God. Some of you, can I talk to somebody here? I came to declare to you. It is not the demon that is fighting your business. Am I talking to somebody here? It is not the principality that is fighting your business. It is a boss who doesn't like you. It is a neighbor. Are you not hearing what I'm saying? It is somebody who has been choking you. Am I, I didn't, am I talking to somebody here? Some of you, your promotion, stop praying. It is not a witch. It is not spiritual. It is somebody who doesn't like you. I don't know to one of them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But I came to declare to you. Are you hearing me? God will deal with them. I prophesy transfer. Transfer. Anywhere you work. If there is somebody who is stopping your promotion, I transfer that person in the name of Jesus. Can I talk to somebody here? I declare transfer. Let the bad boss go. And let the good boss. I'm closing. So they are fighting him. They are so strong for him. He doesn't even think. And he's telling himself, I can't make it. How? I can't. I can't. You think God is not seeing? You think God is not seeing? God sees. Ah, but I see Jehovah. The loins of the king is actually where their strength is. Their loins. It's around the sea. That's where their strength is. But God says, I will lose it. I will lose it.
Hey! 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 That dream that you have been having over and over again, you are praying still. It comes any time you fast, it comes again, and you think it cannot stop. I see the finger of God. I said, I see the finger of God. I said, I see the finger of God. It's entering into the strongest point. Hey, kings, kings, shall lick the dust off your feet. Am I talking to somebody here? I came to declare to somebody here. Kings, when kings stand, all they can do is they can hit your head. But when they fall on the floor and their mouth has hit the floor, anytime you pass, the dust that you leave on the floor, they will lick it. Oh, you are not hearing what I'm talking about. I prophesy to every king that is fighting against you, I command that the finger of God will find their loins and that they will fall on their face and their tongue will touch the dust. Am I talking to somebody here? They took you out of the palace and they put you in the wilderness and they put you in the desert. But are you hearing me? You don't need to wash your leg with water. Kings will lick. And their queen mothers they will become your nursing mother. Their queens, their associates. I declare to somebody that is why God says you will get there. Can you imagine the nations in front of you? Cyrus, I've anointed you, but you won't, you won't get there. I have anointed you, but I also have to hold the right hand and then subdue them. I declare it over the churches, I declare it over the missions. I declare it over your businesses. I declare it over your education. I declare it over your spirit. I declare it over your psyche. Oh, some of you, some of the kings have lifted up themselves above anything, every knowledge of God. But they shall come down. Every kind of mindset that is not of God. Some of you think you will die. But I curse that thought in the name of Jesus. Some of you think that sickness will kill you, but I curse that thought. Some of you think I will never marry. I curse that thought. Some of you think my husband will not amount to anything, but I curse. So at least I've dealt clap for them, clap for Cyrus, clap for the kings. At least I've dealt with the things that stop you. Now nothing stops you. But how do you get there? And he said, I'll give you the hidden treasures of darkness. Riches in secret places. Can I talk to somebody here tonight? Tonight, God has given me the mantle and the mandate to declare that money should come. You are not hearing what I'm talking about. Listen to me. Anybody who is owing mark my words as a prophet anybody who is owing I give you seven months you will pay all your debts God will stop the people they can never disgrace you you will pay all your debts and in the eighth month you will have price I say you have price the amount that you owe I declare it 
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. What you need to get there. Kings hid it. Now if you study theological history, you read about Cyrus. Cyrus was a Megopatian. Now, like Alexander the Great and all those people, at the point in time, they, they were able to conquer wealth and they, they are you, do you understand they come to conquer nations so they were they were they had the headquarters and they were ruling the nations. Meg- Cyrus also. Now, before Cyrus became the Medopetian king, there was a king before him. Now, that king was a very wicked king. He was able to overpower the nations, even Israel, took their, their money. Oh, please, you can have your seats. Have your seats. Let me finish. God bless you. Oh, how many of you are feeling it already? And don't joke with this last part. Because God is giving you something. Tonight the power to have wealth is being released. I said it's being imparted. I said it's being imparted. I said it's being imparted. Ah, Jehovah. Let the heavens be open. Let the heavens be open. Did you not say that if we bring our tithe into the storehouse, you will open the windows of heaven and you will pour out a blessing that there will not be enough room to contain it. We have never seen it in our lives. But today as your prophet, I stand on this word. If there is anybody here who has ever paid tithe, I demand by your gracious by the blood of Jesus open the windows of heaven tonight over us over us over our businesses over our ministries over our families over our nation over over lighthouse Jehovah 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 open the windows wow. So this Medo-Persian king before Cyrus, as he conquered, took all the valuables, plenty, treasures, riches, then he brought it to Babylon. Now, when he brought it to Babylon, then he made a group of soldiers and their generals and everything. He said, go deep, 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 deep into the desert wilderness somewhere somewhere and he said there is a river that river let the river drain the river and then dig into the river there dig a big hole pour everything in it they poured all the treasure in it and said when you finish cover it with sand then bring the water back and let the river flow it took years and they did that work so when he finished one general, one of the generals, he spoke to them. And then the man poisoned the rest of the generals and the other soldiers. So the only people who knew about that treasure was the general and that wicked king. Okay. So the king said, come home, come and rest. When the king came home, when the general came home, he said, you, let's have dinner. Put poison. In wine, the guy fired the thing, he died. So, the only person who knew about all that treasure and riches was that wicked king. And he kept it to himself. And he too, he died. So, nobody knew. And it was the treasures of the world, the, the treasures of the nations. But do you know something? When God anointed Cyrus, and the Spirit of God came upon him, the Bible said, In the last days, I'll pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and, blah, 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 and then your old men will dream dreams. Do you know something? 
according to history, Cyrus had a dream. And in the dream, God took him to that river. Took him underneath the river. Showed him the exact point, spot. Showed him underneath the bed. The treasure is there. So when you wake up, gather your army and go and get it. Next morning, as he called the people, they were doubting him. He said, Follow me. He said, Why are we going well? He said, Drain the river. I said, ah, what, what kind of work is this? That's how come when a man of God comes and he tells you, Let's do something, just follow him. Because you don't know what God has been. When Bishop Patrick says, We're having a convention, we are bringing this person. You don't know what God has said to him. I said, You don't know what God, God has said to him. I said, well, they didn't know that as we fetched the water. Underneath the water, all of them were going to get something that their children's 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 children will eat. And they gather the thing. Put it back. And you know why? That was when God wanted the temple to be rebuilt. And out of those riches, Gave it to the people of Israel and they went back home and they rebuilt the temple. Can I declare to somebody you will get there? I say you will get there. I say you will get there right upon your feet. We believe you've been blessed by the sermon. For inquiries, please call plus two three three. Two six seven six seven six zero five five plus two three three two six seven six seven six zero five five or send an email to info at God's Word for us dot com. Info at God's Word for us dot com. Yeah.